What's up, meatbags? It's the often imitated, never duplicated Tony TGD coming at you with another video. That's right, three for the day. So, um, last week I said we were gonna do a little challenge, a little Amico no access, taking on Amico all access, you know, making some videos, five retro games that we really love. Now, uh, I haven't heard nothing back from all access, they didn't make any videos. I had my guys on standby, so, uh, I guess uh contest is off. You know, everybody goes home. I was just thinking this could be a little friendly thing that we could do so everybody can uh learn a bit about each other. We could uh discuss games that we enjoy and maybe, you know, for a day at least, put our differences aside and just do something nice, bring some awareness to Atari Creeps Alzheimer walk. But, you know, that didn't happen. You know, you try, whatever. But in good news, in good news, Atari Creep, uh, his little Alzheimer walk challenge, uh, he was looking to raise a thousand dollars. So far, he has raised one thousand three hundred ninety-five. Now he has, you know, decimated his goal. He's gone above and beyond, but I don't think that's enough. I think we need to get this to at least three thousand. So I'm just uh, throwing it out to you guys. You know, maybe you should donate. Maybe you should give a little bit of your cash, you know. Maybe uh, cut back on a latte or two and uh, donate. I'm going to put the link in the description of the video. It's going to go straight to this page here. You know, just hit the donate button. Give a couple bucks, five, ten, whatever you got, you know. Anything helps. We want to get this number up. I know he has beaten his goal, but he sets that goal low. You know, he doesn't want to shoot too high, but I think... We should get that thing up to like 3000 That would be really nice. I'd appreciate it. I already threw in 150 bucks. You know, if you guys throw in some money, maybe I'll throw in another 100 We'll see how it goes. Come on, guys. Let's do this. Now then, with that all said, let's get to the video. Let's get to what were the five games that I really love from the retro scene. Now, uh, all these games are... From the Coleco Vision, I couldn't get uh, screen caps. I don't know if they're all on from the Coleco version. I just went ahead and uh, grabbed some real quick. Uh, I was uh, real busy, you know. I made two other videos, so uh, please forgive me for being a little sloppy today, being a little, you know, just grabbing some Google images. Now I do have all these games in my father's garage still, so you know, I'm not just saying these things in aren't just games that I'm just, you know, just grab five random. No, these are games I grew up playing, games I really enjoyed, games that, you know, they're simple, pick up and play, but they really, you know, there's something special to me. I know they're not special to everybody. Some of them, you know, aren't the greatest. They ain't the best games around, but I like them. So let's go uh, number five, Qbert. Everybody's heard of Qbert. I mean, we used to play this game for about two, three hours a day. You know, we didn't have a lot to do back then, so we'd play video games. Like I said, Coleco was one of my first systems. Coleco and the Atari 2600, we had the little adapter. But we'd play uh, a lot of Qbert. This is a simple game, it's something that the whole family could play. You know, we'd take turns, try to beat the high score. You know, I don't think anybody got really that high. You know, we probably got maybe to the 10th board, 11th board, something like that, you know. We weren't great at it, but we enjoyed it. We always made fun of each other. We always were, you know, everybody knew the best way to go. Everybody was like, no, you got to go this way. No, you got to dodge that way. Jump on the little spinny platforms. But we all pretty much sucked at it, but we had a good time. So I really, really uh, got a special spot for uh, Qbert. Now Popeye. Oh my God, I loved this game as a kid. You know, the, the cartoon was still on the air. Still watch Popeye, you know, all the time. I loved it. Everybody knew it. Everybody knew the Popeye song. Played this game almost every day, I would say. Every day after school, you know, play some Popeye. The only game that I've played more than Popeye was probably uh, Cookie Monsters, Cookie Muncher. I'm, I'm a little bit ashamed to say that, but, you know, I was little when these games were around. I was like five, six, so, you know, I was playing the little Cookie Monster. I didn't put it on the list because, you know... I grew up, I got more sophisticated taste. I think this is a little bit of a better game than Cookie Monsters, Cookie Muncher, but I did enjoy playing this all the time. 
you know, it wasn't until recently that I found out that it's not actually Bluto in the game. It's actually a character they created called Bruno. There was a legal dispute over the name of the character. So uh, the company that owned the Popeye rights they had the rights to all the other names. But for some reason, they didn't have the rights to Bluto. So they changed it. They made a character named Bruno. He was around for a little while. Then uh, they got the rights back. And uh, the two characters coexist within the Popeye universe. But uh, like I said, I didn't know that for the longest time. Everyone just thought that was Bluto. Hell, when I told my old man about it, he was like, what are you talking about? And I had to give him the whole explanation and go through the whole thing. So, uh, yeah, that was a little bit of trivia there. Zaxxon, oh my god, this game right here. This is probably why I love side-scrolling shooters so much. I mean, and there's no game really that does it like this. You got fuel, you had height levels, you had to avoid obstacles, shoot enemies. You know, there was so much going on in this game. You don't see that a lot, you know, it was impressive, the, the sprite work, the graphics, it just, it jumped out, I loved it. You know, this is the type of thing, when we talk about Amico, this is the type of game that I was thinking that they were going to have something like this. You know, it, it's not complicated, but at the same time, it's not very simple. There is some, uh, you know, depth to the game, so to speak. It's not 3D, but it's got this nice, like, 2.5D almost. You know, it's old school, but at the same time, this thing holds up very well. Now, uh, number two is Rocky. Loved Rocky. You know, this is a game that you could play either as Rocky, Clubber Lang. It was one-on-one. -on -one. You play against, you know, somebody, usually my father or my brother. We had the, the big bulky controllers that looked like boxing gloves that had the four buttons inside and the little joystick. Loved it. It was probably one of the reasons why I really like fighting games, you know, because this right here, this is like a precursor to your Street Fighters, to all those type of games, you know. Two guys battling it out. You had four different buttons, you know, different attacks, different ways you could hit each other. Solid game. Big sprites, you know, there's not much going on. It's just two guys and a referee in a boxing ring. So the sprites were, bright, were, you know, nice and big. You know, they looked exactly like, you know, they looked like Rocky. They looked like Cloverland. You could identify them real easily. And this is, you know, for me, this was kind of impressive for a system that old. That this, you know, it looks this good. There are games, you know, that would come later on, like the NES that, you know, you still couldn't identify some of the characters by the sprite work. But this right here had great sprites. Simple game. Real easy. Pick up and play. And my number one retro game, the one that I loved, Space Fury. Love it. This is, you know, it's like asteroids on crack. You got the little spaceship. He's got little, uh, like, armors or whatever you want to call it. Little additions he can go on. You know, one has like a spread shot, one has back and forward, and one has like extra forward shots. So you can pick and choose, you know, what level, you know, maybe you'll take the, the forward backward one on the first level, but then you don't have it for the second level. So you got to kind of, you know, there's a little bit of strategy in it. You know, it's got the little uh, scrolling where you can go from one edge to the other and it goes around like a loop, just like asteroids. Real good, real simple. I mean, you can play this for hours. I would play it now. If you had a game like this on, on the web browser, I'd play it. Wouldn't pay, but I'd definitely play it. I mean, I love it. This is probably my all-time favorite retro pre-NES game. So there it is, folks. There's the list. Qbert, Popeye, Zaxxon, Rocky, and number one, Space Fury. I mean, let me know in the comments if you like these games. If you got, you know, what's your list of five games? You know, do these games suck? Do you think my list sucks? Do you think, uh, you know, you can have something better? Let me know. Give me your thoughts in the comment. And, of course, as we do it on this channel, love, peace, booty grease. We out this bitch.